Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse here. It's such a blessing to know that so many of you are out there enjoying our YouTube videos. Thank you for doing that. Now, you don't want to miss anything, so like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell. Why? So you will know every time we post new content. That's like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Pretty simple, isn't it? Now, watch this. Hello and welcome to Glorious Living. You know, this is going to be an amazing program because today I have my daughter Jody back on the program. Thank you, Jody, Yay! for being here. Love joining Chrissy and I. I <laughs> love when you here. come on the program, Jody. It's <laughs> always here. fun. We get so many great comments when you come, so yes. thanks Aww. for taking the time. I know we'd Absolutely. love to have you here every time, but you know, <laughs> we're working on it, y'all. <laughs> We, we are. Yeah. But it's always fun when you join us and you have bring you. so much life to the table. I know people, Aww. when they watch, your joy is contagious. It reminds Some me of somebody days. I know. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, joy is I, yeah, I've Mama often too. called her Jesse in a skirt. Yeah. <laughs> but we're so glad that you're joining us today. I believe that God is going to touch your life and give you something that will help you to strengthen yourself in the year ahead. You know, 2024 is is just, we're still just into it. This is yeah. just February. That's but right. I be we're believing for great things to happen in our lives, and I know that they're believing for for, you're believing for great things too. Oh yeah, it's we're a believing wild time with them. to be alive. It sure is. <laughs> it's a good time to have faith. Amen. Yes. Hey, and before we get into the program, I just want to remind you that Glorious is coming up. The Yay. dates are uh, March the eighth at seven p.m. And, and, that, and that's a Friday. And then on Saturday, March the 9th at nine a.m. Registration and admission are free. And the uh, event is at JDM International Headquarters right here in Destra, Destrahan, Louisiana. So go to JDM if you want to see more details. I'll be reminded about it. Make sure that you 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 uh, pl make pl plans to be here. If you can't be here, go online and watch it. You will not be disappointed. It's always a fun time. It I is. know. I saw your little commercial yesterday. I think oh, it was yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Like, you are unique. Oh, yes. yeah. Like your earth suit and all that. I love oh, it. yeah. We took... Uh, various clips from past yeah. conferences and yeah. put them so much awesome things that God gives you. I can't wait to hear these messages. It's fun to be Ms. around Kathy. a lot of women too. Oh, oh yeah, it's a celebration. You know, it's a whole different feeling in the house. It I don't is. Know. Nice. Like you have to come. So yeah, make plans. Fine. Go to JDM.org and, and sign up. Register. It's free. Completely free. That's Yay, right. Free. <laughs> we love free things. <laughs> yeah, we, we never charge for any meetings any that we do at Just Your Planners Ministries. And if you can't, you can always watch it online and be a part of that family That's too. It's always it good. And We're even, pretty, really aware that there are a lot of people who do that and right. it becomes oh, a much yes. bigger event Faith all no, over the world you know goes all over and then you know even before it comes you don't have to wait for it you can go back and look at old past yes. glorious conferences oh, the one from last year was so powerful it really is the it's whole con good. i know we take little sound bites out of it but you can go back and look at the whole message uh, best place to look at all that is the jdm app oh yeah we love that <laughs> it's good stuff <laughs> well jody mm -hmm. so glad to have you here you know we had a little brief meeting before the program to just think about what did the Lord put on your heart to share this time. So well, what is God speaking to you about for the ladies that, and, every, and the men that are watching today? Well, on the last time, I know you were really liking the idea of kind of rolling through some of the books and bringing out some of the key oh, points yeah. in it. And so we brought out that at Christmas time. Yeah. And uh, it felt so good to kind of reread some of those things mm -hmm. and um, learn a little bit more. So I picked another book. Okay, good. <laughs> good book. And uh, Dad often says that this is one of his favorites. Mm -hmm. So uh, books, period, and it's called I Never Learned to Doubt. It's yeah. Awesome. And it's a weird title in one way because we know that doubt is just part of human nature. But he explains why, how he feels this way. And this is about I Never Learned to Doubt God uh, once God came into my life. Because he'll talk often about how, you know, I doubted people my whole life. Uh -huh. You know, people fail you all the time. They say one thing, they do another. You're always on edge. You don't really believe, you know. Uh, and when he came to God, it was it was just so life changing for him. Yes. So it true. was so from one to the other, and he, you know, I don't. It just changed his perspective. Mm -hmm. Like I'm talking about God. Amen. You know, he got a real revelation of who saved him, what who God is, and all of that. And he was like, who could I? How could I doubt? You know. And yeah. you start putting yourself in a different position mm. of uh, the child of God, not God's boss, determining if what he said is really accurate or not, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> like the the rank of uh, being God's child and yes. how wonderful how you can rest in the peace yeah. of being able to rely yeah. on God as being trustworthy. So yeah. why would we want to doubt him? Right. And he really came through um, so many uh, churches that didn't feel like that. That's so true. And he got a, he was so shocked. I think mm -hmm. at that, and because he was so honest, and I think this happens to a lot of people who go in the world, live however they want. They're, they're doing what they want. They're not living according to somebody else's 
way. Mm -hmm. Right. They're doing what they want 24-7. Yeah. And when they find God and that and they come into alignment with his divine plan for their life, it changes them. They're the same kind of honesty in the way that they believe too. It's very raw, it's very real. They they see it, they go, oh man, yeah. I don't understand how that's gonna yeah. happen, but wow, God said that, and it starts kicking off you know, things in their head, and then there's Christians that come to say, now don't you go too far with that. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't radical. really mean that. Mm -hmm. God didn't, and they're always trying to water it down. So I think that, I never learned a doubt came out of that. Yeah. That perspective of, uh, I don't care what you say. Yeah, you know, God and I said love, this. I'm going to believe him, and then seeing the it come out. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to cut you off, but you know, yeah. seeing faith work. Right. Mm. I love that passion. You know, and yeah. I think God wants that from everyone. Yes. And and it's so easy to slip back into ordinary, slip back into the old way of thinking. But I believe that this program today is going to help you to understand that you can live a fresh, passionate life for God, a real life, not a fake. You know, there's too many fakes out there, Amen. too many right. imitations. Mm -hmm. God wants us to be real before Him. And when we're like that and transparent, you know, it changes us. And this book really speaks to that. Yeah, or there's I too much it. like I'm keeping it real when really all you're doing is, even Christians do that, you're just doubting God. Yeah, you're not keeping right. it real, you're keeping it low. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that's true. I mean, the title. You know, like there's a higher way. Yeah. And that's that's who we're following, something the most high, not the, the most, most low. High, <laughs> not the most low. The most Come low. You're always full of catchy phrases. Yeah, I love Jerry. a catchy I love phrase. It. And this <laughs> catchy title. I like title. a little cheese. This, me too. <laughs> well, this is a, a statement, Jesse. I've heard him say mm -hmm. this many years before he actually sat down to oh, write yeah. the book. And you oh, and yeah. him collaborated on it, right. of course. But it, the subtitle is Lessons I've Learned About the Dangers of Doubt and the freedom of faith. Oh, so good. So that's a great I wanna, can I read the back? Because yeah. this kind of gives you a little bit of an overview okay. of what if you were to, you know, because we're just going to touch on little things in here. But yeah. um, if you were interested, though, doubt is a habit. Mm. You aren't born a doubter. You learn to doubt over time after being hit with the injustices and instability of this world. Dad says, in this book, I'm going to try to help you go back in time and regain what you lost. Good. The wonder of faith is a pure thing a childlike thing, and it's the only thing that works to access God and draw in what you really want. He doesn't respond to need. He doesn't respond to begging, pleading, or wishing. God responds to faith. That's so Ooh. good. It's true. Faith, uh, doubt has roots. So this is what we were just talking about there. From the beginning of my walk with God in 1974, Dad says, I decided that if I was going to be a believer, then I was going to believe. Right. I had a lifetime of doubting people behind me, but I learned in the Bible that God is not a man, that he should lie. I also learned that the roots of doubt must be pulled up in order to make way to receive Ooh, for God, you, from God. I began a new way of thinking all those years ago that I'm still using today. It's brought me joy, it's brought me success over many challenges that I've had, and it's brought me great favor and full peace in a world filled with trouble. And this is the next little section, little four little deals. Doubt isn't what you think. It's not a passing thought. It's not a, it's not a pondering of God's word or reasoning with God or even with others. Doubt is an inner lifestyle choice, a bad habit of taking your own word over God's word, your own thoughts over God's thoughts, mm -hmm. and putting more stock in the words of others over God too. That is not what living a successful life of believer is all about. In this book, I hope to help you shut that down and develop a mindset that sees God's truth as bigger than the doubts of the mind or anything else. Oh, that's Good. powerful. <laughs> and his last little bit was, whatever you do consistently becomes a habit. True. Yesterday is done, today is here, and tomorrow is coming. The lessons in this book are some of the most important ones I've gathered about the nature of doubt, where it came, came from, and how to stop letting it sway you in life. If you are ready to get back your childlike wonder and learn to use the authority God's given you over your own mind, there's no better time than now. Start fresh today. More Ooh. peaceful, joyful, favored, and blessed days are ahead and available. And like me, you'll see them come as you develop a habit of never learning to doubt. Mm. Ooh, and that's just great. That's Jody. <laughs> <laughs> she approved that message. I think to me, the, <laughs> that's well, Jesse, <laughs> Jesse approved Jesse that message. I agree, yeah. though. Yeah, you, 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 you read, read it very well. She yeah. did. You read it beautifully. And I just love hearing it. You know, faith comes by hearing. So when yeah. you read it out loud and it sinks in, it made me actually think of our theme for this year, give God a job. Before we can even approach God and give him those jobs, we need to develop our faith and get rid of every bit of doubt. We might not even be be thinking and there's sometimes I'm going about my day and I might say something and I say oh wait no God I'm, I'm yeah. there's a tinge of doubt in there I got to get rid of it I believe you and your, your word and change that you're habit you're changing your habits little by little day mm -hmm. by day that's right as things come up mm -hmm. you know, yeah just, giving God a job is faith that's how you give God a job it is you have to you believe know. that what he said is true 
Amen. for it to come to you. That's how you're getting him to work. So Amen. faith is the way that you're giving God a well, job. Well, I like, what I like about this title, you know, if you want the book, you, we're going to show information on the screen how you can get it. It is really so powerful and it has so many truths. You could do Bible studies on it with, your, with yourself and other people as well. But what I like about it is I never learned to doubt. It just, just that word learn just kind of leaped up at me just now while we were chatting. Because doubt is a learned thing. Mm -hmm. When a baby is born, they trust. I remember so I mean, sweet. just having them jump into your arms when they're at a certain age, when they're yeah. just tiny, tiny. But after a while, they just start looking at, I don't know. I don't know if she'll catch me. Yeah, because you know, something had to happen to, to make, to undermine that. To, mm -hmm. That they learned. That they learned. Mm -hmm. They learned that, oh, you might not be there. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, yes. or their body is also coming too. Yeah. Some of it's survival. Yeah, but you know, in, the, I mean. <laughs> in the Christian world, many times we're surrounded with people who have had an experience, maybe they didn't believe God, they didn't see the results they wanted, and they, they, they want to put their failure maybe on you. So they want to try to damper oh, you. And or so they, want to, they think it's a misguided sense of like protecting you from yeah. disappointment. Disappoint that's exactly because what it is. Because they're faithless, because they don't believe anything really. Mm -hmm. you know, they may want to make sure that you don't put yourself out there too much just in case God doesn't come through. Yes. So it all starts from a place of like, I don't want you to be disappointed. It's fear-based. Mm -hmm. fear yeah, it's fear-based. So everywhere. It really yeah. is. This mm -hmm. ministry, that's why I love about it so much in the teachings is you and boss always say, we're always going to believe with you. And, yes. and, and we're going to believe with you and stick with you in yeah. your dream and be your two. And that's why right. I love so much about you and boss and you, everybody in this ministry. We know in whom we believe. We're fully persuaded he's able to do it. And we believe it with yeah, all of our Yeah, it's the opposite hearts. of the world who says, yes. don't get your hopes up. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. totally getting my hopes Me, up. Of course. He's our because I can't father. get my faith unless I get my hopes up first. Yes. Faith and hope are attached. Yes. That's They're just right. attached. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and faith so, is the substance of things hoped for. Yeah. Pretty much every us. cliche yeah. that the world has to give you, just go the opposite way. Yeah. Yeah, and you're just say, right okay, that, yeah. let's go opposite. That's God. <laughs> That's, <laughs> a man. That's good advice. It really is. Especially yeah. in today's Because it's all fear-based. It's all lack-based. It's all I can't. I won't. I never will. Mm. I, I don't think that could happen for me. God isn't listening. All that is just fear. Yes. Yeah. And you it's know? a habit to say those things because you've heard them in the past, mm -hmm. you've said them in the past, but you can change that by, with faith. You can say, Lord, help me to change the way I think. Mm -hmm. And because if you change the way you think, you're going to change the way you speak. And so instead of saying, oh, uh -oh I don't know if that'll happen, you start saying, you know, I never doubt. I'm believing God that I'll never doubt. I'm, I love I'm, to I'm hear a, dad. Like dad's really the one who I think is inspiring to me. Yeah. For that kind of thought process, it's because it's an onslaught of the other way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And when you're bombarded, you just start to think that that maybe is how it is. Mm -hmm. Well, it that's is just how it is. it is. Well, that's just how it is. Do you know mm -hmm. I'm just telling it like it is or whatever. But dad goes the opposite way so much. At first, it's abrasive sometimes because you have been schooled outside and everything else opposite. But once you just let go of that, I'm not going to be like offended or break. It's not mm -hmm. going to be abrasive to me. I want to take that. It changes everything. Because oh, yeah. dads will say things like, people say, oh, the economy is so bad. I don't care how the economy is going down. I'm going up. Oh, yeah. You know, I, or when they'll say, I don't have this. Well, I don't care about that because I'm going this way. Right. Yeah. Right. So I'm, I'm a success going somewhere to succeed. Yeah. He yeah. always goes the opposite. He's combating it with faith. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, what he says, <laughs> when he started saying years, I mean, he's so long ago, he says, I've learned to doubt my doubts. Right. And he says, and if you learn to doubt your doubts, you you won't no longer right. be a doubter because you learn to doubt your doubts. Yeah. Like it comes in your head, you say, I doubt that. I doubt I that. I doubt that. So no, no it, it's, it's a conscious effort. Doubt. But it, for him, I think it was a conscious effort yeah. to believe. But at some point, it just becomes that's the habit. Mm, yeah. The habit is then that other thing is abrasive. Mm -hmm. Then the doubt becomes abrasive. It's totally the a ugly turnaround. feelings of the world that say you can't, you won't, you never mm -hmm. will. Go, I will. You know, it's yeah, common. Yeah. I don't care. Time will not defeat me. That's I will not be defeated. Like all these says. things that he says come out of this. I, I don't want to doubt. I'm not, I didn't learn to doubt, yeah. which means I'm not going to keep teaching myself. I'm not going to fall into your pit. You know, oh, where just because you don't believe doesn't mean, well, you got to steal my piece of the pot. Yeah. <laughs> and he no. always says, you know, someone's no. lying. It's not I pick God. You. I pick you. And I love right. how he says that. That is too. a cool way. You, and he also says you don't have to like uh, know how to. Uh, build a car to drive a car. You don't have to know how absolutely everything works in the world to have faith and see results. Yeah. Ooh, good stuff. Do you know what I mean? So faith good. brings it in. It's childlike. Mm -hmm. Like we don't expect a child to have the wisdom and knowledge of a hundred-year-old person who's lived their life. Right. Exactly. Right? We, but we still uh, see them, you know, succeed in walking and taking their steps. Taking each life. And so in faith, it's the same way. I yeah. think for dad, it's cool to see him. Uh, combat it like that. It's it's uh, strong, and I love it. It inspires yeah. me. 
to yeah. say, you know what, no, 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 because I'll hear people say that. Well, you know, it's bad. You know, there's a civil war coming because of Texas. You yeah. know? <laughs> or this yeah. is going to happen. The whole Doom world's falling apart. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad always say, remember Dothan? You know what I mean? Like, so there was a famine, and then God moved the people where they didn't have, you know, the, his people where they didn't have to experience it in the same way. Like, he'll move you into position, even if the whole world is falling, you know, 1,000 yes. at my left, 10,000 at my right, no harm will come to me. Praise God. You know, things like that. Mm -hmm. It's all based on that faith that, uh, you know, God has something good for me. Yeah. And if I believe it, and if, I, if something happens that I don't understand, it's okay not to understand. I don't have to blame God. Right. We have to go back to the scripture that, right. that's based for this year. It's always just keeps coming back in my heart. Is there anything, anything too, too hard, hard for the Lord? For the Lord? No, no, there's nothing that's too hard for God. <laughs> I love that God asked that question yeah. of uh, Abraham and Sarah, yeah. you know, yeah. because he wanted them to answer it. Uh -huh. He didn't just say, I can do anything. Yeah. He asked them the question to engage them Yes, they had to faith. say it out. They had to speak they had to it say out. It. They had to be a part of it. They had to show up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's oh, it's so, so good. good. And I just... So you want to get to the book? <laughs> oh, yes. I yes. Oh, he's going to ramble? <laughs> yeah. I want to kind of touch, too, on the first chapter about uh, that experience that Brother Jesse had that kind of catapulted him, catapulted him to go search out for God right. even more so. And I know you lived it, Miss Kathy, about that part, that, that part in the book. It's yeah, just, this is it's really interesting. Really interesting. Yeah. A brand new baby Christian, and he wanted to see God. And he was, it was just in his heart. He was always asking and asking. Yeah. And uh, he has this supernatural experience where he has that in the room, and, uh, and he can't turn around. Yeah. And he hears the voice of the Lord, and he feels, and it's wild. If you read it, it is an it's awesome. unusual it tells it supernatural. He tells you know? it better than I could ever. But in uh, but, the book, you, it's, it's, it's comes together yes. so real, because I remember reading it. But yeah, and he says, you there. asked to see me turn around. <laughs> uh -huh. And he says, I could not turn around, you know. And he, he felt his body, but he was also, it was almost like uh, he had asked for something, and later he would say, I asked for something that I couldn't receive. Uh -huh. wow. But God gave it to me anyway to show me my limitation to force me to grow, to mm -hmm. say that. But what, meanwhile, Mama's sitting on the side of him. He is like doing this and trying to kick her to wake her up because yeah, he knows that she'll look, yeah. she'll look, <laughs> and she is dead asleep and won't. And this is how, you know, it's because it's God's moment with him. Yeah, it's that personal it relationship. It was moment with him. Yeah, But it showed it. him that, um, I love how it kind of, it, it's, it's a whole big, long story. But it, but it, 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 it kind of ends in this way of... Um, yeah, you got to read the chapter yeah. to get it all in. But I remember that he that was he really read. seeking God to yes. see him. Yes. I was with him in the church service when an evangelist came through town and we were in the church uh, for that service. And he gave a word to him, you've been asking to see me. I'm going to reveal myself to you. And so he even said, and, and you he called me the maid, which I, I really was the maid. <laughs> The maid. The maiden. What he, what the he maiden. meant, the, uh, he meant a young King woman. James I was you. very young at that time in my young 20s. Maiden. But uh, she's going to be there, and she won't even know it's happening. Wow. And, and I sleep very light. So he thought it would happen that night. I mean, two weeks go by. It didn't right. happen. He was getting frustrated. Time keeps you going. told me. You'd, you'd show, go, he'd really, he says, you, he would say things to God. He would pray and sing and say, you showed yourself to Moses. You know respect to a persons. I want to see you. Wow. <laughs> and awesome. so I remember him really seeking God about that. And so that's what this this uh, portion of the book was all about. Yeah, and God, it, it, basically this voice is as you asked to see me turn around. Yeah. He says, it shook me to my core. I suddenly didn't think about the wind or how my body felt under the pressure of it because I realized that this was the visitation. This was the presence of God in that little room that was mm -hmm. promised to him, right? Yeah. God, I cried out, he was still lying in the same position. And he said, again, you asked to see me turn around. I didn't want to turn around. I was afraid and I didn't know what to do. I felt like my flesh was jumping off my bones. It was an intense physical pressure. It was like my body couldn't handle it. I thought I couldn't handle turning around because I'd face that intense pressure even more. So I didn't move. I was locked into place and I was fearful in my own mind. He heard the voice again, a third and final time. You asked to see me turn around. I wouldn't do it, but I suddenly had a thought, Kathy will look, she'll do it. So <laughs> because I was look. facing my nightstand and she was asleep beside me, I used one arm to reach back and I nudged with my elbow. Kathy, wake up, I said, and I pushed my elbow into her again. Don't you know God's in the room? I wanted help. I needed her to get up and be with me in a situation. So I used my elbow again, but the woman just wouldn't wake up. The woman just wouldn't wake <laughs> up. Isn't that funny how in the 70s they would go, hey, woman. The woman. woman. He still does it. I know. <laughs> He's stuck in the 70s. <laughs> just then I realized that the prophecy I'd received weeks ago was coming to pass yeah. exactly the way the that preacher had amazing. said it. I thought I'd receive, uh, oh, here, I missed the page. Yeah, I thought, God's in the room with the wind still blowing and my mind racing. I gave up. 
knowing that I would not turn around to face him, I just cried out for mercy. God, forgive me for being so stupid. I yelled it into the wind. Forgive me. I prayed wrong. And immediately the wind stopped. The curtain stopped flying and fell into place. And when I saw them drop, I turned around as fast as I could. <laughs> and I finally looked, and that's when I saw nothing. <laughs> That was the moment I knew I'd just blown my chance. And the regret and frustration swelled up in me. I got so mad that I just started berating myself out loud. I was out of breath before I could even start, before I started uh, griping at myself for some reason, but that didn't stop. I still kept doing it. He's so funny. You stupid idiot, what's the matter with you? You ask to see God. Then when he comes to see you, you don't even turn around. What is the matter with you, idiot? Then acting more like an idiot, I started to get mad at Kathy. <laughs> This is so dad. Story of my life. This is so dad. <laughs> story of my life. I couldn't believe that my wife could sleep through the wind, much less the voice. She was on. Anyway, he was so ticked off. But what it really does is it brings him to this point where you know, he goes to the kitchen, he gets a sandwich, he's sitting there and he's eating in the living room. And he starts talking. And he says, God, you came to me. I heard you with my physical ears and I didn't even turn the world around. And he says, I heard his familiar voice in my spirit speak this. I'm glad you didn't. It's better that you did not see me and still believe. That's I that. beautiful. I said, but it's my heart's desire to see you, he says. He told me, but you wouldn't be able to handle my glory. You're living in a corruptible vessel, a body that will die. Is that why I was hurting, I asked? He says, that's why your flesh was hurting. Your flesh cannot handle the glory of who I am. So I just stopped talking. I sat and ate my sandwich in the living room, just going over what happened. And I realized then that I knew what God's voice really sounded like in my own ears and not just my spirit. And yet I was processing the idea that he was glad I didn't turn around because it was better to him that I believe without seeing. Ooh. That is a lesson that bred a greater desire in me to pursue even more faith than I already had. This is a true story that happened to me. I don't care if anybody believes it or not because I know what happened to me. But in all the encounters with the supernatural I've had over my many years, I can tell you that not one built my faith. I'm blessed to have had quite a few unusual supernatural experiences in my many years serving the Lord. But this particular one was so important. It showed me that I didn't have the faith or understanding I needed yet to receive what I had asked for from God. I needed to grow in faith to meet the challenge of living for Him and receiving too. I didn't turn around, became a lesson for me. And the lesson is this. Sometimes we can ask God for something we can't yet receive. Mm -hmm. It shines a light on our weakness to handle what He delivers. And the most important thing He gives is Himself. Mm. It takes faith to receive salvation. It takes faith to receive healing. It takes faith to do anything God asks in his word in order to receive from him. It's not faith to receive first and then believe. Our growth isn't ever going to come by just receiving from God. We draw close to him first. We read his word first. We yes. grow as we apply yes. it. Good. Then we receive. That's, That's how faith works. Sometimes we just need to grow and God will give us the opportunity by giving us what we can't handle to show us the limitations of our earthly nature in light of his divine limitlessness. I love that because it just this precious, whole that whole it? experience really yeah. built the foundation for what we're we're living in today with mm -hmm. this ministry. Faith by faith, right? Yeah, faith it's like faith. a one yeah. step at a time and he knew and I mm -hmm. love how the Lord spoke to him and said that it's better that you didn't turn around. I'm happy you didn't. Well, it's I watched it. It is. It's that's but what it, he to told. see it in like your own life yes. like happening. Yes, exactly. It's got to be wild. That is so that cool. Is so it's wild. so cool. <laughs> we forget sometimes, you know, you, you serve a supernatural God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so all weird. of this, it's like an illusion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Time, space that he, he created, flinging the stores with his hands. So yeah. great. I mean, well, there will be a time where we're all in heaven and we will see him face to face. And, and when he returns in the clouds for Ooh, the church, you, that the rapture Christ. of the church, we're going to see him face to face, but until then we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes. Right. And we serve him because we love him. And uh, this whole concept of not doubting him is, is a decision that you have to make in your own heart. You know, I don't have to understand it all. I just have to believe that God is real, right. and that he can lead me and guide me in, in his word. And, tr and I need to trust him. And this is what we, we've learned in our lives as believers. Maybe you're watching for the first time and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. All you have to do is say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I want to live for you. I want to make heaven my home one day. You know, you say those in your own words, anything like that. God sees your heart. And the moment that you do that, you're totally transformed. But then it's a process after that to renew your mind so because God's word has given you many promises. 
and we need to believe them. And yes. when we believe them, we move up into a higher level in Him. Absolutely. And it's so good. You know, if you've prayed that prayer, maybe you, you've uh, been listening to this program and God's touching you right now. We want to hear from you. We want to hear a comment from you and it. know how this program is blessing you because it's all about believing God and trusting in Him. And this title is something that's going to may have caught your attention today, mm -hmm. but God is leading you on a journey, your own personal special journey that, that you just, you're, you're going to take it a step at a time. You are. And learn to trust in Him. And that's really what it's all about, trusting God. It's choosing not to negotiate with God when it comes to what He already said. That's so good. You mm, know, so like, good. Uh, I think that one of the things that Dad brings out in this message often is Eve and how it started. And how uh -huh. it started with that serpent. And really, it started with her listening to Him question God. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really so where the first doubt, doubt wow. came. Entertaining. Was entertaining. When, when Satan said, half God said, he's put doubt on what God had said to Eve. And that we all know that he's the source of all doubt. Yeah, and right from that comes uh, condemnation of God. Notice that the question of God, used, when it's not just curiosity, is like is demonic. Yeah, really. and God's it's, not the one. If it's not faith, it's condemning. sin. It's the scripture. It's yeah. but the enemy trying the to enemy. put condemnation mm -hmm. on you because maybe you didn't. And then he think he'll the go right, right and say that oh that's not true. Yes. So that's not true comes right after questioning on that. So mm -hmm. sometimes faith is just believing that God can. That mm -hmm. if God said it, it's right. That He'll do Amen. it. You know, and He'll do it. Mm -hmm. And all I have to do is believe it. I don't have to negotiate it and figure out how He's going to do it. Or question it or judge it, because mm -hmm. we are not, we are not supposed to judge God. Judge is the judge. We are not the judge of God. That's so good. You know, that's pride and that's selfishness. basic. Pride. That's basic mm -hmm. understanding that we need to do when we come to God. We mm -hmm. must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Yeah. Right. And that's the promise that we have. You know what? We've been it's going. A habit. We've been going so good. This is. This has been. We so, didn't even get we to didn't the chapter. Get, I was we waiting to we, we have a testimony. I wanted Christy to read. Oh, today. Read the yeah, testimony. I have one right here from Alan. Okay. okay and listen. this is actually because yeah, it's so important that you send in your comments and questions because yes. we love to read them. I do. It's one of my favorite things to do is read all of your testimonies. This is from Alan. It says this book by Jesse Duplantis has given me so much to think about on the topic of doubt. I've been a Christian for almost fifty years now, and I've never thought about putting doubt out of my mind the way Jesse has brought it about. I'm very glad I don't doubt the fact that I love the Lord and I want to please and follow him through his gospel. Thank you, Alan. And that's oh, so true. It's I love just, that. There's so much to think about. So I guess there that means is. we need to yeah, do we another just, show. We just scratch the surface. <laughs> and this come is back. how you're going to build your habit of not doubting. There that's you right. go. We're going to be tips. coming back next week. We don't, <laughs> well, don't want you to miss it, but maybe you can't wait till next week. You can go online and get your digital copy or yes. order a hard copy somewhere. Yep. Maybe so you and just get, get started in it. We're going to come back next week with Jody. We're going to yeah. read. And you know, this is... Yeah, we'll go into where we were supposed to go today. Well, maybe this is oh, what no. we're supposed to do, right? <laughs> I, I believe everything we said and what you talked about was so good. You oh, gave good, them a good, good foundation and how it yes. all came about. That is good. <laughs> it's it's been such a blessing, and you know it's so, we're so thankful for all our partners that help us to put this yeah, program. So you. partners, yeah. thank you so much for helping us to do all that we do here at Jesse Duplantis Ministries. And it's and if you're not a partner, you can become one. You can go to jdm.org. All that information's on the screen. Just know that we we appreciate all your gifts that you give. It helps us to go into oh, all yeah. the world, preach the gospel to every creature. We have a vision to that says we're reaching people and changing lives one soul one at a time. One soul at a time. One soul is worth it all. That's Amen. right. Learning yes. to doubt our doubts one show at a time. <laughs> <laughs> one show at a time. <laughs> Building new habits. Yes. Building, Building new, new habits. habits. That's yes. right. Well, thank you, Jody, so much for joining yes, with us today. Hope you come back next me. week. I will. Because we're just at the beginning of this, and there's so much more that I know that God's put on your heart. We're yes. going to do it. Thanks again, yeah, Chrissy, for being thank with you. From Jesse, right? So yeah, amen. I love it. Jesse and a skirt. I love my daddy. Jesse and a skirt. We love it. Daddy's got a lot of good things to say. Amen. And we're going to talk all about it next week. And thank Thank you so much for joining us this week. We look forward to seeing you next week right here in Studio C. God bless you. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.